One of the largest informal settlements in Africa is in Kenya, in the city of Nairobi, called Kibera. It's a very dense, very intense place. Kibera is a slum that is comprising 13 villages. And in those 13 villages, we have 12 tribes. If you look at maps from any existing source, Kibera is invisible, just a blank spot on the map. It's kind of a fully functioning uh, enclave, but it's simply not supposed to exist. It's seen as illegitimate. The Kibera residents themselves have no public school, have no public health facility. The issue of sanitation is a serious problem. We have hospitals in Kibera, but if you ask people in Kibera who live there, they don't know where those hospitals are. So who's actually guiding that place? How is that place going to move forward? When we first arrived in Kibera, we had no idea what the response would be. We thought a bit naively, we'll spend a month or two in Kibera, and at the end, we'd have a map and the community would celebrate. But people are sometimes skeptical of new projects, data collection. This is why we didn't do it ourselves. It was important for the people of Kibera to do the map themselves. I personally never knew that there's something like a GPS. We were mapping facilities that are important to the community. This included religious facilities, health facilities. They were all very enthusiastic to participate in the project. But still, we would get a little bit of questioning from the neighbors. Well, why are you making a map in Kibera? Are you trying to evict us? Are you giving this information to the government? Is this so that they can tear down my house? And we say, no, no. The idea is you would have access to this information yourself, so you can actually have a proper discussion about the future of Kibera. That changed their perspective. They mapped those 13 villages in about three weeks. Every person that walked around with a GPS created this skeleton of Kibera itself. When we animated the work that they'd done, everyone in the room was totally blown away. Now that such a map is there, it can hold officials accountable so that we can tell them, look, here is a population of about 200,000 people with no facilities completely. What are you doing about it? In the second phase of mapping, we went a little bit deeper. We mapped education facilities, water and sanitation facilities, health facilities. We had young girls that helped us map security. Okay. But you don't want to be walking at night? Okay. On the security map, we use tracing paper to say, okay, this place is dangerous, this place is not dangerous. Like blue should be the more safe. Red can be the less safe. We had discussions saying, can you identify where women get raped? It's not a safer place. On the map, they're called black spots. So can one person be the... It's shocking how matter of fact they are about it. Like, it really is just a reality they live with every day. After six months, you have seen one of the places that was mapped as being dangerous. Today, that place has a police post. We used to be uninformed. Now we have all the information about Kibera. We are now informed. When I saw the map for the first time, I was proud. This has not been done by other people. Rather, it has been done by me.